Hey everybody, from JFMS Recording Studios, and here today we're talking about reamp boxes and reamping. Now, coming off our last video, you should watch about DIs and how to record DIs and what you want to use them for and everything. But once you've gotten to that point, we're going to cover just the reamp boxes today. Now, what you're going to do with a reamp box is see you've recorded your DI signal into your DAW. Now you have that very clean, unadulterated guitar signal. Now you want to run it back through your amplifier. For other purposes, say, say something happened to that and you know it didn't sound the way you wanted it to sound, you, you screwed up miking it, um, you just want a different sound. Say you, I do this a lot where I blend two tones together, I record you know, some big you know, scooped mid high gain guitar sound on the recording day and then to make it stand out in the mix better I'll record something with a much lower gain, much higher mid as a reamp so it's exactly the same playing and just you but it's a different tone, so you can bring it up and you can blend the two together to get this really aggressive sounding tone that sounds just just awesome. You do all kinds of cool blending with it. Um, but the th problem with that is is that the output, now you need, to, you need to get that out. You need to run it through your amp again. So you need to get it out of your DAW, out of, and then into your amplifier. Now this, your output of your interface should just be a line, usually typically a quarter inch line level output. Now a guitar amp isn't gonna wanna handle that. It's way too hot. Uh, and it's balanced, so you have a you know completely different type of input. So what a reamp box does is it just basically bridges that gap. You can you have an input. Typically on these is a an, uh, an XLR style input, and you can just use a regular uh, adapter cable that goes from a TRS to an XLR or whatever, as long as it's a regular line up. It's a line level in. So you have you know standard ground lifts and stuff. This one takes power. Some of them are passive. Some of them are powered. Um, but all it does is it takes the line level output of your uh, DAW, your, your interface, and converts it internally down to a regular, you know, something. Basically, it ends up coming out like it would out of your guitar. So once you take a regular quarter inch cable out of here, you plug it on the output. Um, this one has like all typical stuff is just like a trim. It has a couple different outputs for isolation and like a level plot on it. And that's basically it. You plug it from output of here into your guitar amp. And now your guitar amp. Presto thinks it, the guitar is playing into it. So uh, you can have a lot of fun with this. You can get your guitar your amp playing in there and you can play around with all the dials and everything while it's like essentially you playing it, but you're not, you've already done the playing. You just get to sit there and play with knobs and sounds and play with miking and experiment with stuff. It's really, really fun. Um, it allows you a lot more flexibility. So we're gonna go ahead and show you how that's done. So we're gonna go, uh, what we've gone and done here is we've uh, connected the reamp box. We have a, a power in that we've just connected to regular AC power. We've taken, and um, I have a patch bay, but just the output of my Apollo interface, I'll put seven. We've taken, it's got a TRS balance quarter inch input. We've taken the cable, plugged it in. It's got the uh, other ends, it's an XLR. So you got your, that's the kind of cable I needed for the situation I have. Plug it in, plug it into the input. We don't need to lift the ground on this. And if we have an output, I have a direct and an isolated. I like using the isolated. It just sounds a little less noise. Um, we have, I have the trim pot cranked all the way up. This cable goes right through, plugged right into the input of my Yamaha. Okay, everyone, we're back here. Um, so, like I said in the last video, we had a bit of an issue with the screen capture software, so we're redoing this section. Uh, might be a little different than what I might have talked about earlier in the video. We uh, recorded in the DI video, the DI, and a uh, JCM 800, uh, and it sounds like this. We had the DI. I'm just going to show you a little quick section here. Okay, and then we had what we recorded with it as the uh, JCM 800. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to talk about reamping. So what we want to do is we want to get this DI signal out of our system and back through the amplifier to re-record it. Uh, so the output on the system is a line level output, which is what I talked about earlier. We need the DI box to change that line level output into something that the amp can handle. It makes it sound like a, you know, makes the amp think that it's a guitar playing it again. So what we need to do here is we need to change the output to an output on my rig. So I'm gonna choose output seven because that's the one, it's after all my headphone outputs and everything, so I always use that. But any you know line output you have available that's not also going to your speakers or anything like that. And then you uh, wanna make sure your volume's at zero. You can adjust this 
uh, if, if you're not getting if you're getting more or less signal depending on how hot you recorded the DI, you can adjust it here. But be aware that any plugins that you have on this, anything you want to do to it, um, is going to happen. It's going to go through your amp. So don't put any compression or EQ or anything on here that you don't want going through your amplifier. On the flip side, if you don't have a phaser pedal but you wanted to record with a phaser, you can put a phaser plug-in on here and run that through and it'll come through the amp signal. So, okay, we're going to go and make another track here. We're using a Yamaha T100 amp this time. So, again, the reasons you'd want to reamp vary all over the place between just not getting a good tone or bad miking or something in the beginning or just wanting something different, which is kind of what we're going to highlight here. JCM 800 is a fairly uh, mid forward, low gain amplifier. Um, we just kind of get that tone, and uh, the T100 is very much the opposite. It's kind of high gain, uh, you can likes a little bit more scoop mid. So, okay, we can have, a, and again, we just have a, a mic on the cabinet. You know, the amplifier is mic'd as normal. The output 7 on my rig is plugged in with a cable to my reamp box. The output of the reamp box goes to the input of the amplifier and then regular amplifier recording techniques. Let me just go back to the beginning here, make sure that output is there. Make sure this uh, track is record enabled. We'll mute the 800 track for right now and we will press record. Let it play right through the amp. Okay, so now we have what we recorded on game day here on when we did the DI track. We have the DI. And now we have the, sold, uh, the Yamaha T100. Now it's the exact same performance. You can do that over and over and over again, different sounds, different amplifiers, different tones, whatever you want. You can stack them up, uh, low gain and high gain, different sounds, uh, even, let's do something fun here. Let's pan them out left and right. Let's just see. Gotta check for polarity when you do this, because sometimes when you reamp, um, you're out of polarity. Different amps have different input polarities. This one's the same, okay. All right, let's uh, pan them left and right, mute the DI and hear what that sounds like. All right, and there you have it. That's reamping. Uh, there's a lot of other things we can do with this. Like I said, uh, you can reamp snares and, and kick drums and all kinds of things through your amplifiers if you want to. Just a means of uh, getting an output of your guitar, of an output of your interface into your guitar amp. Uh, but real quickly too, I'm gonna show you what you can also do with the DI. Um, a lot of people use this, it's amp simulators. All you need is a DI track or a DI input on your rig. And you go into something like bias here. And we can pull up anything we want here. Uh, you know, I'm a tube amp guy. I prefer the actual sound of real tubes and everything. But, uh, you know, these have come a long way. Check this out. So just the DI track. There you go. That's another thing you can do with the DI. Like I said, if you have a DI input on your interface only, you can usually just plug in, throw one of these amp simulators on there. Uh, just to get a sound, you can do a lot of recording at home. And then when you get to the studio, you can pull out this reamping technique, run it through your real tube amps, and uh, save yourself a lot of time in the studio. So anyways, uh, again, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, and we'll see you later.